Solar panels and wind farms. Wind turbines. Solar powered hot showers. Solar on tidal energy. Wind farms. Renewable energy. Harnessing the natural power of the wind by using turbines. Soaking up the power of the sun with PV and thermal solar panels. Transforming the power of Cornwall's waves with new technology. The infinitely sustainable energy source. Renewable, Renewable energy! energy. Large scale, because I think it would just be more beneficial for more people. Large scale? Large scale. More small scale ones. I don't mind large scale as long as they have a big impact on the terrain. Small scale. Small scale. Small. Firm. Micro generation is about doing what you can in the locality to reduce all the technologies we chose were because we were looking at a long lifespan of the building. And there's four six <laughs> kilowatt proven wind turbine. So of electricity alone. 6% was micro-generated on site. I think the actual reality has been far more positively received than the idea. I'd get accosted in the street with people saying, you're the fellow with those wind turbines, aren't you? And I'd go, yes. And they'd go, I love them, you'd better keep them. Wind turbines do make a bit of noise, but as long as the background noise is of a level, you don't notice them. But can other places do it? Of course they can. Uh, we've got two Vestas V52 turbines and they're 850 kilowatts and that's probably enough to power just under a thousand homes. And the energy that the turbines generate goes into a substation on site and then this is stepped down to go onto the national grid. My opinion is that um, in, in terms of onshore wind I think we should have a, a few large turbine sites. They generate more electricity. They only work when it's windy. <laughs> we may have to start that again. So that's one of the big limitations, um, but generally they're operating about 70 to 85 percent of the time. The only environmental impact is the landscape impact, because mm. obviously you can see them from qu quite a long way away all around. One of the courses that we have on the campus is renewable energy, as well as having lots of other environmental based courses. For us it was very important to have aspects of sustainability and renewable energy active in the infrastructure of the campus. It was chosen by the building architects for both the Performance Centre and the ESR. I gather these are chosen because of um, the resources that were available. I think if we are going to look at solar, uh, we should be focusing more on solar thermal heat as opposed to UV um, generation. There are uh, 5,680 solar panels in, in the solar farm at Wu Jane, and they are currently producing uh, 1,427 megawatt hours per year represents a saving of CO2 emissions of about 737 tonnes a year. Maintenance of the solar panels was an issue from day one, concern regarding dust falling on the panels and reducing their effectiveness. That doesn't seem to have proved to be a major problem. The rain seems to wash the dust off. The network coming into the county is really designed to bring power into the county, not take power out of the county. So if we get close to Cornwall's uh, targets for energy generation, then there's going to need to be significant investment in the infrastructure to take that power out of the county. So Cornwall's at the forefront of marine renewable energy development uh, with regard to WAVE, and we already have uh, two test beds, one in the Falmouth Bay called FabTest, and then we have the WAVE hub off the north coast of Cornwall off Hale, where there's essentially a big socket on the bottom of the sea and a cable running to the land. We're lucky in Cornwall in that we have a lot of coastline, but it's not always sunny, and the same goes for wind. It's not always windy in the right level, but waves are 365 days a year. Looking to the future, we have three options. We either have no electricity, electricity from nuclear power stations, or we have renewable energy. So to me, the choice is clear. We need to develop renewable energies for the future.